I'm going to continue to work under the camera, but I'm probably going to speed it up just for time's sake, since you have the basic concept now. And you can slow the video down using your little controls down here in the right hand corner, your video controls. So you can slow it down if you want to. I won't speed it up too much, but I'll go about four times. And um, what I'm going to do is probably work two more times around this wheel and then slow it down for the last one to give us seven. Okay. So I feel like they're starting to get far apart. I'm probably going to connect it right here and then do the next one right here and start trying to split them again. They're getting a little bit smaller, but this one is a little bit long, so I'm not going to go quite two or three more. I'm going to go a little bit shorter on this one. And I'm going to weave to here, or coil to there. And we're going to keep these rounds side by side so that you have a nice flat disc. Once we get to the basket, I'll show you how to start coming up and making walls. But for now, we're working to keep this flat like a coin.
So now I think I'm going to start. So I'm at number five. I'm starting number six. One, two, three, four, five coils. One, two, three, four, five coils. One, two, three, four, five coils. And one, two, three, four, five coils. And now we're starting on the sixth time around. Okay, so right about here, I'm going to start to split them a little bit shorter because the runs are going to get longer. See, and that's a little bit too long for me. So I'm right here starting round number six. I'm going to go ahead and wrap right here. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into here. So I'll lock it down right there, and then I'll start weaving around a little bit tighter. I'll go to the half point here, I'll grab this one, go to the half, grab this one, and so on. So this will be my sixth time around. I'm looking to make these two fairly even, so I'll go to about right here, and then the next one I'll attach here, and then I'll split, and so forth. And I'm almost ready for another piece of 28 gauge, another three feet, you might be too.
Now we'll go to here. And from right here, I'm going to go ahead and attach a new wire. Just insert it right there. And again, we could be switching directions. I normally, on this tight of a coil, I just don't. I just keep going in my overhanded direction. I deal with this little gap right here. So I'm going to break this off. Break the one below off. Push these together the best that I can. And I'm going to lock it down about right here. Normally I don't break those off until I'm a little further along, but we'll just go ahead and lock it in and then it shouldn't travel. Like I said, I'm not really working for a pattern more than just consistent holding and something that's fairly neat. pull through just manage that you don't get these little kinks if you do just turn them out don't try to pull them through they won't go And you just kind of scrape on those and it won't look like anything happened. Okay. Then we'll keep going. I'm going to split these two right here between this one and this one. We're still on our sixth time around.
what I'm looking for is to stay a consistent size to the segments previous to this one while also looking logically to split and tie back in between the previous coils where I tie back there so it's kind of brick layer style. It's kind of in the style of bricks. I'm going to go to here, just a little bit past there, probably to here, make it a little bit longer and then try to go to there. We'll see how it goes. Again, you're just looking to keep segments logical and similar in size to the round that you're on, round, round number six. I could be counting these, but it doesn't always work out because I didn't start counting in the beginning. Okay, so we have finished up our sixth time around. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six coils to the right, six coils to the top, six coils to the left. And from the point, I have one, two, three, four, five, six coils to the bottom, and I'm starting my seventh time around. Okay, so now I'm going to start to just try to split these. You know, this one's a little short, so I'll go here. I'll go here, I'll go here, I'll go here, all the way around to time number eight, and then we'll pause and talk again.
your 24 inches is working its way shorter. What I have right now is about 11 inches, 11 and a half inches or so from this spot to the tip of my wire. You may or may not have exactly the same. I may or may not have cut a quarter of an inch off or so. Your rounds might be looser, but you should have approximately the same amount of wire left and your spiral is just approaching one coil larger than an inch or so in diameter. And now, so here we go for our seventh time around. going right here. And now we can be either ready for a new wire or you can probably get to the next one with the wire that you got. So 
Sometimes it gets hard when it gets too short. Yeah, I think I'm going to change wire before I get there. So I'll cut another three feet. My 18 gauge is actually short enough now that I can go all the way around the end of it. So you can start to weave however is comfortable. I'm going to keep passing it over like this so that I can stay in the camera for you. I'm sure you're asking if I could be dropping a one millimeter bead every time I do this stitch. And the answer is yes, I could be putting a one millimeter bead inside each of these pat, uh, ties right here. I did not, but there goes a nice variation for you. I didn't just for time's sake but I might show that to you on the next project. But I think you can pretty much see how that might be done. We're going to make the hinge on round number eight and then the final pass will be round number nine. We're not quite done with number seven yet. Almost though.
All right, so now that I have all seven rounds, and I know that because I have seven coils if I count to the right, seven if I count to the left, seven, and seven down from the tip. This would be my eighth time around, and this is the time I'm gonna make the hinge. And since I'm right here and starting my eighth round, I'm gonna make it right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my circle is nice. You know, if you have to get a nylon jaw, just give it a tap all the way around. Make sure it's nice and flat and circular. From right here, this is now going to be the hinge. So from right here, I'm going to make sure to hold my coils. And I'm just going to bend this wire straight up. It's okay if there's a little slight slope there. Just like that. And now is the time you want to get the other tool I mentioned, or may not have mentioned. Now is the time you want to get the other little tool out, which is a dowel that is about 18 gauge, maybe 16 gauge. I have a little jeweler's file that works great for this. A toothpick, not the flimsy toothpicks, but the very nice round toothpicks work great for this. Your round nose plier will be a little difficult to do this with, but you could. And you could also go to the craft store and get these metal dowels. They're jewelry dowels. They come two to a set. One is a little bigger than the other. This is the smaller of the set. And the end of this is pretty perfect for this, or 18 gauge. You have to make sure since, since the other half of the basket, since the other half of the locket, the basket half is gonna be using 18 gauge. 18 gauge has to pass through the hole that you make. So I'm gonna to go to about this one. This is about 18, just slightly bigger than 18 gauge. I can look at it and see it might be 14. I mean, uh, 16, excuse me. This one is more like the 18 gauge. But anyway, I could also just take 16 gauge wire. So I'm gonna hold it like this. I'm gonna take this, get as close as I can to here. I'm gonna get perpendicular to it and then I'm going to start making coils. I'm going to make eight coils in total. So there's one, two, three, just make them side by side the best that you can. You can make less than eight, but I find that if you only make three or four, the lid kind of wobbles a little bit on this size of a pendant. So there's four, five, six, seven. Get this last one is eight. Okay. If you need to, before you take it off of the dowel, you can pinch it together a little bit more. If it has a slant on it, you can try to correct it while it's still here on the dowel. Don't worry about your little weaving wire. And then you can slide it off of the dowel. You wanna make sure that this one ends behind it because we want it to land right here at the coil when we turn this. So now that we have it like this, you can either use your hands, you can use a plier or both and just turn the coil down, okay? So that it lands right here on top. Hopefully you don't have too much of a little bubble there. If you do, you can just work it. And you want this, um, we're gonna bend back into the coil right here. So I find it's a little bit easier if you end it so that it's on top and that way you can literally take it and pull it back down 
or you can turn it. But just take it and open that last one up. Try to keep your disc flat. Turn it right there and just lay it right down along this coil. I don't have to straighten it all out again. That's okay. Just keep control over it. Okay, and we'll start a new fresh piece of wire, or if you have length on this one, try to just continue with this one. And before we do, since this was a pretty hard bend up here, you might just use your plier and do a little tapping right there. Fix that last wrap if you need to. And then I also go ahead and try to pierce through right here twice. So I have a little bubble right there. Before I tie down the other side, I'll try to fix that a little bit. Just by pulling up a little bit and down a little bit. And then right here, right next to this other wrap, you can break through. Take your weaving wire. Go through once or twice more to your preference. Two is usually good. And even though I intend to cut this wire off, crossed over mine a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to go around this a couple of times. Just make it as neat as you can. And then come over here. I don't pass through here because I intend to eventually cut that off. Right now it's just for me to be able to hang on to everything and stay attached at the hinge because it's going to fight you a little bit. And so the same as the opposite side, right here, I'm going to break through. I'm going to attach this quickly by going around here once. And later on, I can cut that bit off from the back if I even need to, or I could just leave it if it's not offensive. Chances are I'm going to cut it off just because I don't like the stray wire there, but so I'll wrap a couple of times. I'm going to pass through and I'm going to catch it at least once. Try to keep them as neat as you can. I'm going to go right next to it and I'm going to break through the weave a little bit again and go twice. Just because it's right there at the hinge. Okay, now I'm going to take and I'm going to continue my wrap around until I get to the bottom center here where I'll make the little lip and then I'll continue the wrap around until it ends. You don't have much left, but you should make it around there and you should be able to have just enough to make a quarter inch lid. Okay, so I'll go ahead and wrap a few times here and I'll attach right here. You can make your attachments as you see fit, just to make it a little bit more sturdy at the lid, I'll probably attach more often. So I, I might actually go here and split them in here and split them in here and split them. Okay. And that should look pretty good.
This is actually our eighth time around. So up until this eighth time where we made the hinge, the process for starting the bottom of the basket is exactly the same. You would stop right here and then start to crawl up and make the side walls. So if you can't guess already, you're gonna repeat this entire disc <laughs> once more but the starting wire length will be 36 inches rather than 24 inches. And we'll do that in the next video. But I just want you to know what you're looking at. I probably have to get another piece of wire, 28 gauge, but I'm not going to make it three feet. I might just need another foot or two. We'll see to get me to the finish. We're almost there. And if I wanted to go around with different wire, say different color or different thickness of wire, maybe 26 gauge step up the last, um, the last circle here, here is where I would have started that. You know, I made a, would have made a couple of wraps and then probably gone to a bigger gauge wire if you want to do something decorative for the last time around. Okay, just FYI, that's where you would start it. Don't go too crazy. Remember that we have to stop in the middle here to make the little hinge clip. I mean, a uh, lid clip, the clip to keep it closed. The little closure. Ooh, I've been making coils for so long now. It's getting a little batty. Okay, so just at a glance, if I follow my center coil all the way down past my center, cut right there and all the way down, I need it to be right about here. It's basically a prong, 
you know, the same way as you would make a prong. The length of it is going to be dependent on your basket. But I'm going to make one short so that we can, we'll make a little catch on the basket side for it. So it'll probably be about a quarter of an inch long in total, just like a prong, like a four or five millimeter prong. I'm probably going to have to do a new wire here. I'm going to get myself to the place where I need to be for my lid closure. And if you can't visualize it, you can get down on the board, center your coils all the way down, and then just make a little mark. You can buff all this out. Oh, I think it went off a little bit. Just make a little mark. So right about here is where I'll start. I didn't need to do all that. You don't either. That could be on the inside and it'll buff out. You can also just a little alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol gets it out, but also on the polish it comes out. So since I need it to start right about here, I'm going to go ahead and double wrap to get some strength right here. So I'm going to break my weave open a little bit. I've got enough that I'm going to just use the end of my wire for this half and start new wire on the second half. So I'm going to go once. I'll make one wrap around this. I'll break through the weave again as close to the other one as I can be. One wrap off if you can be. Go through again. Don't stress yourself about it. It'll hold and it'll be nice. I'll make one more around here, go two times around here. Now I'm just to the left of my mark right there. I'm going to go ahead and straighten this wire out, hold everything right here, get a nice horizontal bend. Hopefully you're at the approximate middle. And if not, you can make a little adjustment. And that's pretty good. And then you can measure about a quarter of an inch or about four millimeter. If you're using this plier, you can just hold it right there and basically bend all the way back around itself. If you have a flat nose, I'll be fair and use the flat nose now, like we've been using with our prongs, that's about the length it needs to be. Just going to hold it right there, push, come all the way around, get as close as you can, and then right here. I squeeze them together and just like you would do a prong, squeeze on top. And that's about a four millimeter. You don't want to be too short because it's got to be able to clip the basket. Could have made it a little bit longer if you wanted to. Just holding it and coming back out and aligning back up with my weaves. That's pretty good with my coils, I mean. I'm going to go ahead and sew it in first, and then I'll bend it down. But I can see on my board, the center of my coil, I'm in pretty good position. 
So I'll get about another two feet of 28 gauge just to make sure I've got enough, maybe just another foot and a half. I don't like to run out twice. I'll finish up this last bit. So to finish this up, I got a fresh foot and a half or so of 28 gauge. I'll insert right here, make a couple of wraps right here at this little armpit. And then just like the other side, I'll go ahead and wrap twice into my coils. Part the weave right there. Try to stay along the side. I'll go twice. It's probably parted enough that I can get my wire through there. Okay, just try to make it as neat as you can. Make sure you still have a tiny little space right there. It gets tight right there. If you need to bend it back slightly to get in there, do that. And start to bend your curve back up. We'll continue until we finish this little bit at the end here at the hinge. Gonna get kind of tight here at the end. Just keep working patiently, you're doing great. The lid was a big deal. <laughs> we have the basket to go and it'll be easier now that you have the technique down. So just a couple more tie-ins, then we'll be done with the lid, almost. Unless we want to put some decorative beads or something on it, but we can always do that later also, make decisions on that later. Okay, 
here's where it's going to get a little bit tight to get into this corner. We want to end this 18 gauge right here. See the little bend if you have a little bump um, or just land it, you know, right here, right before the coil. You don't want it to be in the way of the coil because the next wire has to pass through it from the basket. So sometimes you have to get your plier and you can take the bend ahead of that hinge and you'll cut it if you have anything to cut. Right there so that it lays down exactly at the edge of that hinge, okay? You should have just enough wire to do that with. I'm only going to wrap a couple of times and then I'm going to go through again as close to that edge as I can get it. Oop. Now I'm going to go through the weave a couple more times, or at least just once. And I'm not going to leave the end of this dangling on here. I'm going to bury it into this coil in here so that it doesn't have the chance to fall off of there. Now here, try to go as tight as you can. Try to make sure that that little tip isn't pointing up. It either needs to be level or it needs to be slightly down. Just like that. This was a foot and a half of wire. You might go two feet or a foot and three quarters just to give yourself a little bit more here at the end. So now I'm going to come down. I'm going to try to bury it right there into the coil. Probably going to have to use my needle again. So I've got a couple of double wraps here to hold it, to hold that end down. Try to really snap into those coils if you can. 
And then you can take it and try to do a couple more laps or at least one more. Right there into the edge of the coil and right there at the edge of the wire, I mean. You can go twice, go twice. Okay, that's pretty good. Ooh, that's a lot. Now we'll break it off from this side. If you want to cut away this little running wire that we ran across there, you can do that. I'm probably going to do that. I can't quite grip that, so I'm going to try to break it using my plier. Doesn't always work. Just try to get it as close as you can and bury that end. And that's pretty good. So let's get rid of these two over here. Kind of the same thing. If you can bury them into the previous coil, try to do that versus leaving them right here. Because they um, they can unravel right there. So you take the time. Come up here. This was a lot of work. I could have left myself a bigger piece right there. Make this a little easier. But I'm going to try to dive back through. And get into that coil. Ooh. Don't hit your camera like I just did. I'm just going to try to end it by snapping inside this coil right here. I think that's pretty good. Now this one, bring it in. I'd actually go from this side, it's probably easier. Just try to climb into that coil and end it there. So right here, right above it. You can always cheat by using jewelry glue as well and tapping these ends with a little bit of it. Try to get straight on so that it snaps in. The best that you can. See if you don't get it snapped in, it can unravel right there. 
So there it goes. That's pretty good. And I just spin it until it breaks. If you need to tap anything, tap it right there. And now we have to deal with bending this down. It's going to want to move your entire last row. So don't fret that. Before you do all that, take a look and see if you need to do any work at the hinge. Try not to let it curve too much. Okay, and decide which side is the inside and the outside. They're both the same, but once you bend this down, then that'll be the underside. Okay, so since I marked up, well, I can't even see my marks, but since I marked up this side, I'll just go down this way. This is probably the hardest part of it because this is difficult to bend this little thing without your coils going awry. So I'll take my nylon jaw. You can hold it right there. Hold everything nice and tight. Take this right here. I'm at an odd angle here. Make a 90 degree bend down. You can spin it. Certainly the whole thing turns, but if you don't, don't hang on to it right there, you know, these coils might roll and that's okay too. Just keep control of it. Turn it 90 degree down. Tap it, make sure it's all nice and straight. And once we get the basket made, We'll make sure that there's a little lip that you can lock into. And again, one of the hardest parts is to turn this little tip slightly up. So you want to be pushing back with a rolling up kind of pressure. Otherwise, this whole thing just comes up and doesn't really do anything. So try to get it right here so that you have a straight edge. It's pretty good. Push back and then roll that tip slightly up. That's all you need. If you need to make this more 90, do that. And that's it, you guys. That's a pretty good lid. If you need to adjust this hinge, if it's going at an angle like mine, you can use your round nose plier. You have to use your round nose plier. <laughs> Stick it in there and manipulate it a little bit. That's pretty good. Okay. That should be pretty straight. Okay. If you want to get fancy, you can cut this at a slight angle and you can sand it. I left it blunt, but I'll show you in case you want to taper it. You have to get a very fine cutter. You would have done this before you tied it in just so I could have gotten a deeper cut. But you can cut it at a slight angle. Then you can take your jewelry file, mine, and just give that edge <coughs> A little bit of a cleanup. It might bounce a wire around or two and that's okay. You just clean those up because that's where we landed a couple of ends. Worst case, get your cutter in there. Kind of scrape at it until it cuts as close as possible. And just scrape it down. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty clean. You can sand things if you want to now. Take your little hand sandpaper and clean up the hinge if you need to. Clean up this little guy if you need to. And now basically you're going to start this entire thing again 
you'll do up to eight coils. Let me go this way. You'll do eight coils, and when you get to the eighth one, I think we were working with the little point in one or the other direction, but when you have eight coils, you'll stop right there and you won't make this we'll do something different and crawl up for the sides okay so i'm just going to use the beginning of this again this entire flat seven rounds and get us to the point where we're back here at number eight all right so that's part one you guys that's a lot <laughs> thanks for being here I'll see you in part two for the basket